Oh, you're a mountain biker. Hey, what color is your high tower? Hi, I'm Matt with Jensen USA. Dad jokes aside, there are a lot of reasons why people are choosing a high tower, and I have one of them. I've got a, a standard 135 mil high tower, which is my palate cleanser. I, I've been fortunate enough to get to ride a lot of bikes here, and in between, I always go back and ride that bike, and it's because I feel like it does so many things well in terms of geometry and balance and position on the bike. It's right where I want it. Uh, in terms of suspension, uh, it really pedals efficiently and it's pretty capable. So to me, it's kind of the gold standard. And I'll talk a little bit about that bike, but I'm gonna focus more on the Hightower LT. When they designed the Hightower, uh, basically they thought that this was gonna be the one bike to rule them all for them. And uh, EWS was coming around and a lot of people doing enduro racing and they've got some fast guys out there. And those guys were working that bike hard and asking for more travel. So they went through and they prototyped some linkages and they, they got them to 146 millimeters travel. And those guys loved that bike, but uh, of course, in that discipline, more is better. So uh, they went through, reconfigured, and they've come up with a plan here to get 150 millimeters at both ends, and it's, it's obviously working. Uh, those guys are doing well on those bikes. And while it's a great enduro race machine, it's also a great bike for the way that we ride every day out there on the trail. So for some people, that high tower is gonna be perfect. Some people are gonna wanna turn it up to 11 and get a little bit more bike and this is gonna be a great choice for them. We have to start out talking about Santa Cruz by talking about VPP. And for them, they've been doing this for decades and they've really refined, they've learned a lot and they've got this evolutionary advantage going on with all their new platforms. Uh, I've heard people describe VPP as two counter rotating links that make the drivetrain behave as if the pivot point was out in front of it. That's a pretty good description. I, whenever I break that down and think, what does that actually mean? To me, what that means is I get a drivetrain where the pedaling inputs are isolated from the bump inputs and the suspension performance. And it's one of the first bikes that I rode where I said, you know what, I'm gonna leave the sag at 30%. I'm not gonna overinflate the shock. I'm not gonna dial in a bunch of damping because the kinematics were, efficient enough on their own to take care of that. It really allowed me for the first time to take advantage of all that travel and not be putting a band-aid on something and taking away what I needed. This bike comes in a lot of different flavors. We talked about there's both the Hightower and the Hightower LT. Uh, they're all the Hightower models are going to be carbon only. So they're, they're going to have two separate carbon layups. The Carbon C bike comes in, the entry price points $39.99 for the first complete bike. Uh, this bike in front of me is $67.99 with an X01 Eagle build. Uh, the interesting recall is you can also upgrade the rims and get this bike built up with Santa Cruz Reserve 30 rims for $79.99, which I appreciate that. To me, it's all about suspension and wheels in terms of how you upgrade your bike. And speaking of suspension, they've done a clever thing here. They're using a Fox Performance 36 Elite. And what is unique about this fork is it's essentially all the same internals that they use on the factory level fork. So you're getting a grip two damper, you don't get the Kashima coating, but it's a great value that allows them to spend money somewhere else on the bike. They're pairing that with a Fox DPX2 Elite rear shock. And the reason why they've chosen this instead of an X2 or a coil is because of the suspension curve on this bike, that lower air volume canister is probably gonna give you a better overall performance. So once we move into the rest of the bike, SRAM X01 Eagle Group, there's not really much to complain about there. You've got code RSC brakes, and if you haven't ridden the newer series of SRAM brakes, these things are pretty awesome. I consider this a best-in-class brake now. You're also keeping it in the family with a reverb dropper post with an underbar lever, and then they've got some other nice Santa Cruz kit out there on the bike. There's a carbon bar, you're getting a pair of their Palmdale grips, you're getting a WTB Silverado that's got a custom Santa Cruz logo on it. It's a great all-around package. We love these bikes. Uh, if you'd like to see them in person, come over to our Corona store where we have one of the largest collections of Santa Cruz bikes in the whole country. Or give us a shout, talk to one of our gear advisors, they'd be glad to give you a little bit more intel if you have more questions. Thanks a lot and keep pedaling.